Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate a visual alternative to ChatGPT so that instead of having a conversation using a standard chatbot interface, you can have direct visual feedback on what you're talking about. So you can see the main ideas, how they connect to one another, what topics they form, and also more importantly, the gaps between those ideas. So you can develop and steer your conversation in a much more interesting way, where you will not touch upon some generic terms, but rather focus on the ideas that are interesting to you or that are underrepresented, and also try to connect uh, those ideas that are disconnected and make this conversation much more informative and interesting. So if you're interested, keep watching to learn how it works. First of all, you need to go to uh, the Infranodus app, and then inside you choose GPT-4 chat mode, and you can use 3.5 or GPT-4. I will use 3.5 because it's faster. And I'm going to ask it, what are some of chat GPT alternatives? So as you see, I'm using a standard chat interface, but what happens is that when I add ideas into this chat interface, they're shown on the left, but also they're visualized as a graph where the ideas I use are the nodes and the co-occurrences are the connections between them. And when I get uh, an answer from GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 model, the answer, the nodes or the ideas that are used in the answer are visualized on the graph. And if they're used in the same context, they're also connected. And I can quickly see uh, what this answer contains, in fact, right? So I can see that it's talking about some alternatives like Google, IBM models, BERT, but I can also see that it's talking about weaknesses and strength of those models. So I can even focus on this idea a little bit more. I get a hint from the graph that I could focus on weaknesses and strength. So let's see uh, what are some weaknesses and strengths of those models. Add this question into the graph. Uh, it's highlighted here so I can see how it fits into the discourse. And then when I get the answer, it's also going to be highlighted so I can see how it fits into the conversation we're having. And this graph becomes very useful once your conversation grows longer. Because of course, when it's short, I can read all the answers, but then gradually, uh, this visual representation allows me to keep track of the main ideas covered. So for example, here I can see that uh, it responded with some strengths and weaknesses. And I can actually highlight it and see uh, what are those terms. So for example, I can look at the term transformer because I like that we're getting technical here. And I can select some of the terms and see in, this, in which context it was used. So for example, here it's saying that one of the weaknesses is the limited control over output transformer. Okay, so let's say that in fact, I'm going to select those terms and I can reformulate a question or I can just select those nodes and send them as a prompt into the model. And this becomes very powerful because you're basically using the graph to prompt the conversation and to steer it in an interesting way that will develop the concepts that you find important rather than having to read through the whole answer, right? So here I see that it added something in this direction where it's uh, incorporating, it's talking about incorporating humans into it and also how you can mitigate some of the weaknesses by providing uh, the feedback me mechanisms from humans and also tuning the model. So again, I can select those nodes and ask the system to develop it a little bit further. I don't even need to care about uh, making a well-formed prompt in this case because uh, ChatGPT is trained to provide uh, comprehensive answers, right? So it will always respond taking the context into account and also taking my prompt into account. So th this becomes a very fast way of querying the system through the graph as well, where you don't have to um, formulate questions. You can just choose some ideas, uh, throw them in and get a direct response. And here it's giving me a really nice response where it says uh, incorporating human feedback into the tuning and refinement process is a of machine learning model is an effective technique uh, and how we can use this feedback to uh, make the model work better. Okay, so I can maybe zoom out a little bit more and focus on some other clusters. They're shown here in the analytics panel. So for example, here's another cluster on fine tuning. And by the way, if you don't wanna take uh, your own time to interpret what those clusters mean, you can also use the AI feature, which feeds those clusters into uh, 
the GPT model, and the GPT model will come up with the names for them, right? So I can see directly that already in my conversation, I'm talking about machine learning, model exploration, AI libraries, and NLP fine tuning. So I get a quick visual overview of the conversation. Imagine how useful it gets when the conversation is really long. You can really track, tr trace the context really well through this. And what happens here is that I can focus on one of the clusters, like uh, NLP fine-tuning here, and then go a little bit deeper into this. So, for example, I can select some of the concepts here. NLP, performance tasks, fine-tuning, um, technique. I think that's enough. I send it as a prompt, and then it's going to elaborate a little bit further on the various techniques for fine tuning that exist. So as you can see, instead of focusing on generic stuff like what are those alternatives, you know, how they're all similar to one another, I'm focusing on the aspects that are important to me that I find relevant, in this case, some technical details. And it allows me to prompt the conversation um, in a much more interesting way than I normally would if I had to read through everything. And also I don't have to take time to formulate um, any of those questions, even though I can also do that using this chat window and write something about like, can you tell me more about fine tuning the model? So I can use the graph to understand what I want to ask and then ask those questions myself as well. So there are these two approaches. And just to kind of make the workflow clear, I like to use the graph to get a general overview of the ideas, okay, and then what I think works really well is when you don't focus on the main topics, but rather find some stuff at the periphery that you find interesting, and then you feed them into the system to make it generate some interesting content for you. Another really useful and interesting approach is to use the Gap Insight feature here, which basically uh, identifies the gaps between those topics that you find inside your text. So for example, here you see I'm talking about AI libraries NLP training, um, model updating, and so on. I can go to Gap Insights and ask the system to highlight some of the gaps in the system. So for example, here we have regularization balance and model updating. Two topics that exist in the text, but they're not yet well connected. And then I can generate an insight question using the AI that would link those two topics together. And the question will be relevant because it will be touching upon uh, the ideas that I already mentioned in the conversation, but it will connect them in a new way. And this is what makes it interesting. And I can read this question and then uh, generate a response by myself using my own brain. I, if, if I like it, I can save it into the project notes and maybe use it for later research. So using this green button. Or what I like even more is that I can send it into the graph and it's going to be sent to the chat GPT model and prompted to generate a response uh, that would come up with an explanation of how to, uh, like here it's asking what is the impact of regularization models and it's going to answer this question for me. So I'm using the model uh, in itself uh, to make it question itself, but it's me who's guiding the process, who is steering it, and this is what I find very interesting and useful in this approach, that um, it's kind of this human in the loop uh, approach that we can use with AI to make it uh, provide much more interesting and relevant answers to us. So instead of making it run on its own, we're actually uh, integrating ourselves into the process by choosing the parts that we find important and then uh, feeding those, those parts and gaps into the system. So for example here, another gap between hyperparameter tuning and AI libraries, generate a new question that would link them together and then feed that question into AI to make it come up with some interesting idea, uh, some interesting question, an answer to this question that would connect those ideas in an interesting way. So here it's asking about how can fine tuning of transformer models and feedback from end users be used to improve the performance and technique of human generated output and identify weaknesses and strength worth exploring. And what's great is that uh, ChatGPT will have to answer this question. It will have to come up with something. And it's not the question that it would itself generate because it usually tries to focus on the most probable outcomes, uh, unless you adjust uh, the output temperature, of course. But in this case, 
We are doing all this uh, live as we go. We select the parts which are not well connected and then make the system come up with some interesting questions that would bridge those gaps um, and generate some interesting responses that we could then use in our research. So this is how it would work. Try it out on infranodus.com. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can receive a notification when I put a new video online. And thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoy using this Infranodus ChatGPT visual alternative tool. Thank you.